Okay, kindergartners, here is our first book about the grasslands. It is titled Grasslands. Starting here, it shows a map of all the major grasslands in the world. All the major grasslands are in yellow on the map. And as you can see, there's lots in Africa and there's quite a few in America, but there are other tropical grasslands in Australia, in South America, and Asia as well. Grasslands are large open places where most of the plants are grasses. The grasses may be short, tall, or mixed. Wildflowers grow in some grasslands. A few trees and shrubs are found in other grasslands. Some grasslands have hot summers and cold winters. Others are hot all year. Grasslands have times of rain followed by long periods of dry weather. Fire is important to grasslands. It burns away old parts of plants so new ones can grow. Many animals that live in grasslands eat the leaves of grass. Some animals eat grass seeds. Others hunt and eat the grass eaters. Some grassland animals stay safe by living in large herds or groups. Many are fast runners since there are few places to hide from enemies. Some grassland animals are able to hide in the grass. Others stay safe in underground burrows. A burrow is a hole underground that they have, the animal has made and dug for itself or found. Grasslands provide food for people all over the world. Grasslands are important places that need to be protected. And here at the end of the book, there are some more descriptions about all the different grassland pictures that were shown. Now I'm going to head to a second read aloud about the grasslands. As you can tell, I have lots of books here. And this one is going to talk to us a little bit more about the differences between the prairie and the savanna. A journey to the grassland. Tall plants sway as the wind blows gently. The mostly flat grassland stretches far into the distance. This area is buzzing with activity. Insects, birds, and other animals can find food and shelter in the grassland. Grassland biomes are found around the world. They can be tropical or temperate. Temperate grasslands in North America are known as the prairie. The prairie can get hot in the summer. Rain falls, but the land is usually dry. In the winter, the prairie can be freezing cold and covered in snow. Tropical grasslands are very different from the prairie. They are warm year around. It rains a lot during the rainy season. It is dry the rest of the year. Fire is important to all grasslands. Fire removes the old plants, kills non-native plants, and brings nutrients to the soil. The roots of the native prairie plants can survive a fire. Animals in the grassland. American bison graze on the prairie grass. They can grow more than six feet, 1.8 meters tall. That's taller than most people. Bison have thick hides that keep them warm in the cold winters. So kindergartners, bison live in the prairies of the United States of America. Pronghorns travel the prairie in herds. Both male and female pronghorns shed their horns each year. They use their hooves to get to grass beneath 
the snow. So they also live in the prairie of the United States of America. Red-tailed hawks soar high above the prairie. They hunt animals such as mice, rabbits, and snakes. A killdeer makes a nest on the prairie's ground. To protect its nest, it tricks predators by pretending to have a broken wing. The predator follows the bird away from its nest and the killdeer flies back once the predator has moved away. Garter snakes slither through the prairie grass. They eat small animals such as mice and toads. They hibernate underground during cold winter weather. A prairie's grasshoppers spring from plant to plant. These insects have long back legs and two pairs of wings. They jump or fly to get away from predators. Grasshoppers also live in tropical grasslands. Tropical grasslands in Africa are home to elephants and zebras too. Plants in the grassland. The prairie is full of many kinds of plants. Some are tall and some are short. Wildflowers bloom in the spring, summer, and fall. Monarch butterflies in the prairie depend on milkweed. They lay their eggs on the milkweed plants. Caterpillars hatch from the eggs and eat the milkweed before becoming butterflies. Big blue stem grass is one of the tallest prairie plants. Its roots grow deep into the ground. In spring, it has tiny yellow flowers. Many prairie animals eat big blue stem grass. The wind is very important to the blue joint grass. The wind helps pollinate the plant. It also carries the plant seeds around the prairie. Grasses also grow in the tropical grasslands, the savannas. Tropical grasslands have some trees as well. These trees are acacia trees and jackalberry. They're the two most common trees in the grasslands. But as you can see, scientists, if you look at this picture of the tropical grasslands and the savanna, there are some trees and bushes, but not a lot. This one pictured here is an acacia tree. Here are some important connections. All life is connected on the prairie. Prairie dogs are one of the most important parts of the prairie ecosystem in the United States of America. America. Black-footed ferrets rely on prairie dogs for food. The ferrets are endangered. Without prairie dogs, the ferrets may die if they don't get enough prairie dogs to eat. Prairie dogs dig burrows underground. Their digging mixes the soil and gives it air and it helps the plants grow. Some animals rely on prairie dog burrows for shelter. Snakes and burrowing owls live in the old prairie dog burrows. Prairie dogs are just one example of how prairie plants and animals are linked together. Links like these help the prairie keep the prairie healthy and thriving. So here we go. This is the end of the book and it has a few more facts, but we're gonna go ahead and stop here. I will read a couple extremes. The largest unplowed prairie in the United States is in the Kansas Flint foothills. It's 11,400 square miles. The heaviest land animal that's native to North America is the American bison, which lives in the prairies, and it can weigh 930 to 2,200 pounds. The fastest land animal in North America, where we live, is the pronghorn. It can run 53 miles per hour. The largest prairie dog town was discovered in Texas in 1901. There were 25,000 square miles with an estimated population of 400 million prairie dogs. So they found all the tunnels were connected and it was over 25,000 square miles worth of tunnels and 400 million prairie dogs, wow. The tallest prairie grass, uh, grasses, there are a few prairie grasses that can grow more than 10 feet tall. 
So thanks for joining me for these two read-alouds about the grasslands. We are going to be watching videos about the grasslands and also talking about animals, animals that live in the prairies of the United States of America and animals that live in the tropical grasslands or the savannas of Africa. Bye kindergartners, have fun learning.